Welcome to the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network, a modern, innovative multimedia platform, broadcasting ideas and connecting minds. Every company has a story to tell, from the small startup to the large enterprise, and everything in between. This is one of them. We hope you enjoy this brand story conversation. Hello, everybody. You're very welcome to an On Location episode coming to you from RSA Conference. This is Sean Martin, where I get to talk to loads of cool people about some cool things, all in the guise or in the, in the spirit of helping businesses operate securely so we can actually generate and protect some revenue. And uh, it's difficult to do that sometimes when, uh, when teams are moving around, tech stacks moving around, clouds are moving around, and business requirements are shifting. And of course, the threats aren't standing still either. And in order to keep up with a lot of it, uh, I'm actually hearing a lot, of, a lot of folks talking about, well, certainly business transformation, but a lot of IT transformation and security teaming up with IT to, to transform some things in, in a better way. I'm thr- thrilled to have Tim Roddy on with me from Open Systems. How are you, Tim? I'm good. Thanks for having us on the show here today. Yeah, it's going to be f- going to be fun. I'm excited to hear what uh, what you're hearing as part of the conference, but even more so, what what some of the conversations you're having with customers are. But before we do that, maybe a quick word about who Tim is, what you're up to. Sure. So I'm vice president of marketing at Open Systems. Been here about a year and a half. Been in the security and tech industry for about 20 years now. Spent a lot of it at Secure Computing, which then became part of McAfee, and built out the web security gateway product line um, and moved it all into the cloud. That's now uh, part of what is known as uh, Sky Sky High Com- uh, Security. Uh, things that get m- moved and changed names in this industry, which of course happens yes. all the time in the blink of an eye. Sometimes it seems yep. so. Yeah, and, and, and analysts have their own terms for a lot of this stuff. As we oh, they as well they do as well. We keep changing that. So yes. to keep everybody on their toes. We yeah. don't have enough to deal with. So I, I want to talk to you a bit about. Um, so there's no question we we had a, a forced transformation uh, a few years back, and then we have. I see a lot of transformation from a business perspective, and I've been talking to some CISOs, and I've, I've asked them, "Have you seen much transformation?" beyond business processes and, and the drag from from that, from IT, to actually pull in security to have transformation as well. And a lot of them are saying, I think, not enough. We need, we need more in terms of better collaboration with IT and security to really transform things in a better way, where we kind of get ahead of some of the things and, and enable the business to operate more effectively. What, what are some of the things you're hearing in that respect? The, some well, of the same I, I are totally what? agree yeah. with that that statement and that experience, and, and uh, we've lived it over the years, even before uh, COVID. Um, Ten years ago, people started talking about shadow IT, mm-hmm. which was the business bringing up and buying applications, cloud applications from new cloud vendors to run the business, uh, and never telling the networking people and security people about that, even though they all end up reporting into the the, the head of IT, right? right, the CIO. That is, that's the norm, it, it's not the exception. And then within the networking and security part, if the company's big enough, they're not talking to each other enough necessarily as well. So you now have gone well past the critical point uh, where, especially the forced acceleration that occurred during COVID where everyone was working remotely, right? And everyone went out and spent money. We're gonna get Zoom licenses, we're gonna get more VPNs, and we just gotta connect people, right? Because at the end of the day, the business imperative is let's be productive. Right. We gotta connect them. If you can't get to to where your asset is, your, your data, you can't get your job done. If it's a manufacturing plant, the manufacturing facility shuts down. You can't have that, there's no revenue. Um, so that takes priority, but then security is like, well, how is that going to work with it, right? So you can't necessarily keep up with it. So we're now at a point where we're seeing network transformation to support those business realities of data being located in all these different clouds. Um, people are spending time trying to figure out how many different cloud apps do they have. The surveys show, you know, probably 30% of the ones they have they don't even know about because people go out and buy five user licenses here and there, but there's important data for the organization that's there. Is it properly protected? Does it meet compliance requirements? Do you use two-factor authentication? And they're like, I don't know, I just needed to get my job done, right? I just went off and did it. Um, People buy uh, suites from 
you know, Google or a Microsoft, you got all these other products that are there and you're, it's part of your E5 license, for example, for Microsoft, right. and then some people start using them. Other people look at the dashboard, don't even know what they are, and they don't use them. So this gets out of control. So transformation has to be understanding what's being used, how are we going to secure it, and how are we going to connect to it? Because the old networks of hub and spoke, where you had everybody in the office and you had a firewall protecting everything, because all the assets were there, yeah. doesn't work anymore when the assets aren't there anymore. They're out in a variety of different clouds, public and private. So tell me about some of the organizations that you work with. Because you, you have a very consultative and, and service based um, engagement model. Right. And so I think my guess is a lot of them don't have huge teams, don't have a lot of the skills and a lot of the knowledge to operate a mature program. So they probably look to you to, to help with that. So how does that change um, kind of the, the point of the CIO and the CSO? They may, they may only have one or the other, probably not the CISO. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, no, that's absolutely true. So, first of all, when you're looking at consolidating or reworking networking and security, you got two different groups there you, you got to work with, the networking people and the security people, who eventually may all report to the same person, but the higher up you get, they're not paying attention to the details. Um, th th throughout the entire market, you have uh, individuals, at the highest end, the largest organizations who have no problem hiring and keeping networking and security staff. But as you move down to smaller size, mid-size, and, and small enterprises, and our target market is around, around 1,000 users to 25,000 employee okay. organizations, what we call small enterprise and mid-market, they feel very sharply the cybersecurity and just IT technology employee shortfall that exists worldwide. You yeah. just can't find people. And if you are a skilled person, you in IT and security and you want to work for a company as opposed to a vendor creating security products, you're going to go to the Fortune 500s because you got a great career path there and a great right. name to work for and benefits and everything. So it's harder for the 5,000, 10,000 organization, person organization to hire and keep people. The ones they do have, they want to deploy them on running the business, enabling the business so that it's, it works properly, that it, you, know, you know, applications are integrated and, and smooth business processes. They don't want to spend them on security. So that's where managed services come into play. Right. And we offer our SASE or ZTE services purely as a service. If you want to do it yourself, hands on keyboard, okay. you can do that, but not with us. Right? Right. So that's how we address that issue that of you know, not having enough people to work um, and manage the solutions. Right. So are there, I don't know what the right word is, misnomer or mis misunderstandings where they might buy one or a collection or a suite of technologies that enable the business and have an expectation that security is built in or have an expectation that security is being managed by the organization that provides those products like office suites in the cloud for example right <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about that where they uh, misnomer, I think, is probably the right word. Where they might think something right. should be, and, and it's really not. Well, you buy you buy some you know well-known cloud-based business solutions, whether they be office suites from the Googles and the Microsofts, or CRM systems. You know, they'll they'll tell you. You know, you have you're going to set up um, a hierarchy of who can get to what. Salespeople can only do certain things. Who gets to do the reporting? Who can edit everything? That is security by to some degree, or how you design it. We're going to enforce two-factor authentication and we're going to integrate into an IAM provider. Who is it that you want to use? All the major ones, whether they be Microsoft, Okta, Ping, et cetera, right. you're going to support. That's scratching the surface okay. of it. They're not going to scan for his data being sent the wrong place, right? If a salesperson all of a sudden is down, downloading his customer list, that's not a good sign. He may be res resigning the next day or something right. like that. So that's where you have to have a security view of the entire thing from a, a web security standpoint, a data leakage protection standpoint. And those companies that make those applications, their job is to make an application that enables business use cases not right. secure the thing and make it hard to get to some of the right. data, right? Right. So. So how do you so how do you balance that? Because I'm sure a lot of organizations think just that. that once we apply security layers and, and lock things down and, and put controls in place, it's going to be harder for users to access. It's going to be harder to work with our partners. It's going to be harder to close transactions. 
And the C-suite's how about things? how fast can we move and how can we be right. a good partner to get things done, not, exactly. not put blockades in the way. People get annoyed with two-factor authentication. People write down passwords. They use the same password. We've trained them, trained them ad nauseum on that. Mm -hmm. do it anyway, right? So, and you hear about the hacks sometimes, you just kind of shake your head right. on what some people have done, never change their login password yeah. from admin, right, yeah. or something like that. Exactly. So, um, you know, we work consultatively with organizations because we do the implementations and we, you know, we, we sit down with them and say, what is it you're trying to do for your transformation? We're not doing this overnight. It's going to take years, right? We're going to change the network first or we're going to change the security service part of it. But we have to have a vision of where you want to be and we'll help you through that. Who are the partners that you've got? What are the applications you're using? If you want to put ZTNA in place and get rid of your VPNs, what applications are you using? We have to know that. Tell me about so. that scenario. Because maybe, maybe organizations, security teams have heard others do that, right? Move right. To ZTE, they don't quite understand what that means. Can you can you right. paint a picture for them? Right. So, right now, users, especially remote users, would typically, if they're going to get to private acts, especially applications you've created yourself and you've got running in your own data centers, okay that some group created, and once again, IT created them, and security probably doesn't even know about them, right? right? Um, they may, have, they may not be in a, a typical HTTP protocol, so they could be using UDP or something like that, okay. right? So those users know if I, if I hook up to the VPN, connect to that firewall, I can get in, on, I'm in the network, I'm going to run around as if I'm in the office and, right. and get to everything. You want to go to ZTNA, you want to put a policy enforcement point in front of every single one of those applications. So. If you're going to transition that, which first thing you want to do is take your web security logs, if you're going through a web gateway on-premise there, let's run a report and see what people are going to. Okay, take away all okay. the public stuff. They went to CNN.com, they went to their local newspaper, they went to weather.com, they went to their bank. Get rid of all that stuff, that's fine, okay? And look at all the other applications. You can come up with a list of, oh yeah, we know we use Salesforce, we know we use this, we know we use that. Great. What are the, all the other ones that are unnamed? Then you got to start doing a little work and research what they are. You may, you may know some, some well-known ones that are internal, but what people are, are always worried about is if I turn off that VPN, I think I've done uh, zero trust network access, right. and all of a sudden there's some guy who's going to some app we didn't even know about and now can't get there. Right. So you end up it, leaving it on the VPN <laughs> and so they can use that, yeah. and sometimes they make me quiet about it and we'll keep that running for a while, and you've got not gotten over the chasm to completely getting out of that that business because the VPNs mean you got to maintain them, you got to do the upgrades, you got to update the, the, the hardware. It's going to go end of life. You need to buy another capital equipment purchase. Right. All that goes away when you get a service for zero trust network access. And it's getting through that last eighty percent of anything's pretty easy. It's that last twenty percent is the hard part. Okay. You know? Okay. And so I, so I presume you help them do that last twenty percent. Is or we do. We have to work with them, and yeah. you know, it's it's that's the harder work. You know, and it's like you guys got to spend some time. You know, the, the customer, you got to help us out because you're not just let any vendor come around around in your organization yeah. typically, right? So you do a consulting project. We have a you have a way of implementing. You want to do it quickly and for a defined price and, and cost, and walk through walk through these things. And you owe, one of the biggest ha hazards for that, or things that'll slow it down, is trying to figure out exactly what applications they got. And there's always that worry: Did we get them all? It's like when an organization decides, it's been around for a while, decides to clean up their Active Directory list. You know, it's like, why do we have all these things? Well, one way to do it is yeah, turn more them off. More you, garbage than you can turn them <laughs> off. Else. You'll find out real quick. You know, depending on how big the organization is, how critical it is, maybe you know you do turn them off and you see who, who screams, right? Mm -hmm. So, because we did them five years ago for a reason, and those people aren't even here anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So how we start a transformation, we get eighty percent, we get the last the last mile twenty yeah. percent. Now what? It's not a set and forget it, is it? Oh no. Well, we're going to run it for you in our case. Okay. Right. Uh, if you're doing it yourself, you are going to have to maintain it which is resources have to spend time on it, right, right to do that. But, so it does have to be, you stay on top of it. And then you have to monitor it to make sure it's pro working properly, you're not getting people getting logged out. If someone says, I can't get to something, why? You've got to triage that. So that's all part of that. You were trying to do that with a VPN. You've now gone to a managed service provider like us, taking care of it, with our, in our case, with our own tech stack. We're going to monitor those things proactively as well um, okay. and make sure and, and look and see What's the, you know, are we seeing any changes in behavior? You can also see some anomalous behavior where you think maybe someone's a password issue or something like that, okay. right, from a security standpoint. But if you're using two-factor, you're going to eliminate most of that problem anyway, yeah. right, because the attacker's not going to have access to your 
your phone token. Right. You know, so. So what are? Give me some customer stories of outcomes. Where? Where have they made huge strides in in IT transformation? Security built in by design from the start. Right. With your support, getting it rolling and managed. Well, we see we see examples. For example, we have a lot of customers in the manufacturing area. Okay. okay. Manufacturers have plants with automated equipment. That equipment, some of it can be quite old, now has controllers in front of them that are digital. So they can't be firewalled off from the network anymore because you have to be able to get into them to handle the controllers, those upgraded digital controllers. So uh, use cases are putting zero trust network access in to only let people get into those controllers that are allowed to. It's a small handful of people, maybe some external contractors. So. When we do a ZTNA for IT, we we'll oftentimes, if they're a manufacturer, do it for OT as well. We okay. like having the same solution, and we've got control, and somebody really knows what they're doing. Because the manufacturing people, they're about manufacturing. They don't know the security necessarily. They may not even ever worry about it, because if you were firewalled off within DMZ, no one could even get to your plants, you don't have to worry about a lot of things. Right. right? So, and, then, and the devices weren't connected together. The last thing you want now is someone getting in with multiple digital devices, the next thing you know, you can take everything down, because if it's a process manufacturer, or even a widget manufacturer of piece parts, you're out of business in production. And you never, once that time's gone, you never get that back, right? Yeah. So. Are you seeing, um, are you seeing cases where, because especially in the, in the mid-market, they're oftentimes suppliers to other organizations. Well, they'll supply much bigger, Comfort exactly. Fortune 500s, yeah. Exactly, so are you seeing, um, a push for some of the large organizations that they're doing business with, asking them to demonstrate their posture and... You and get into SOC yeah. compliance and all yeah. those kind of, of, of compliance, which varies by country and everything else. Right. Um, and they like knowing the provider has process us, in our case, managing it. We've yeah. got those certifications in place as okay. well, that we're following processes on things like change control and upgrades and all, all of that. So absolutely, they're having stuff flow down and at the federal government level, you're right. seeing big contractors, defense contractors, having to comply with CISA directors for getting to zero trust. Yeah. yeah. Because they don't want some of the issues that you see, even at some big software firms where you know they've, they've had their code compromised and what have you, right. and then that gets sold off to hundreds and thousands of organizations using it, and you've got an enormous problem at hand. Yeah. So do you, you support organizations that provide service and products to uh, Public entities, government entities. Um, sure, we have you know we have some, uh, manufacturers uh, that make automobile parts. They make military parts, things like that. That get into right. get into much bigger systems. We, yeah. we may not even know what they are, but they want to know that we have got our certifications, and yeah. they're working towards their certifications because there's a whole documentation tree for that. You know, flows down, yeah. right? So absolutely. Yeah. Um, time for one more. Story outside of manufacturing, any other examples of um, positive outcome working? working yeah, I mean, it's just in general, in, in terms of reducing costs and getting off of MPLS, is still you know a third to forty percent of the world still still is on MPLS. Okay. There's still a lot to be moved there to to get to using the internet as your backbone and having um, you know these smart points of presence that aren't necessarily managed by a telco. Um, but we partner with the telcos in terms of running these down, and, and then we run that SD-WAN for them. And you do it, and the, the use case there is to reduce costs and be more flexible. Right. Because you can bring up a site very quickly. A lot of organizations that'll get off MPLS will still keep it around in small amounts. They want it as a backup, this they want to connect a critical plant to a, a corporate entity or a critical branch office on one side of a continent or a country to yeah. the corporate office. So they still have those use cases, but it's dramatic reduction in it. You know, we're still years and years away from MPLS going completely away. It's still a multi-billion dollar, uh, you know, industry there, but it's it's evolving and you need the SD-WAN to get to uh, an environment that is sassy. You're not going to do sassy if you're on MPLS because you'd be routing everything back to corporate and then back to the cloud and back again. Too many hops, you want to reduce the hops, you want to be as close, the user as close to the data as possible while still enforcing secure policy access. Yeah. Simplicity, at least it doesn't make security harder. <laughs> right, you don't want to make it hard, but you've got to make it reliable and you, yeah. know, and, and you, want, you want secure connectivity, not just connectivity. Yep. That, that is a good user experience, and we talk about sassy experience, 
in what we do because we want it to be a great experience for the user, for the organization that buys it, and, and uh, we'll keep, that keeps them as a customer if they have a great experience. Yeah. So. Fantastic. Well, Tim, it's been, been a pleasure chatting with you. Likewise, and, enjoyed uh, it. Thanks. Hope, hope you have a good, uh, good rest of the week at RSA Conference, some good conversations, and thanks for helping the uh, small, or the yeah, mid, mid-sized. Mid, mid-sized enterprise and <laughs> mid-sized market uh, stay secure. Well, we and enjoy we, it, we and we look forward to, to talking to the folks listening and hopefully uh, you know, discussing with us their needs. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Be sure to check uh, out Open Systems on uh, ITSB Magazine, connect with Tim, Tim Roddy, and uh, I'll put links to all that so you can, you can meet with the team, learn more, and, and get some help as you, as you transform your network and secure it along the way. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Tim, for joining. Catch you on the next one. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come back for more brand stories on ITSP Magazine. If you want to share your company's brand story, go to ITSPMagazine.com and explore our advertising options to learn more. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues, and stay tuned for more brand stories as we continue our journey toward redefining cybersecurity, technology, and society.